Hey, today I'll be talking about episode 68 of Legend of Jin Huan. So now Jin Huan knows Ling Rong is going to miscarry, it's just a matter of time. It doesn't take a genius to see that they will try and blame this on her, so she avoids Ling Rong like a ticking time bomb. Jin Huan was very careful with her gifts, so Ling Rong can't say anything about those. She then tells everyone that she's sick, so she can get out of visiting Ling Rong, hoping to avoid her until the end of her pregnancy. Jin Huan has her doctor check out the drugs they found in Ling Rong's room, and he tells her that the drug, combined with water or burned as incense, is nearly impossible to resist. That gives her an idea. She begins sending lilies to Ling Rong. The doctor confirms that they are totally safe and good for pregnancy, so eventually the staff stops checking them. Then, Jin Huan puts a minuscule amount of the aphrodisiac drug on the petals of a final vase of lilies and has them sent to Ling Rong. As long as no one notices the powder, the drug will sit inactive until water is sprayed on the flowers. About five months into the pregnancy, the end is near and the Empress and Ling Rong are getting desperate to find a way to pin the miscarriage on Jin Huan. Their plans are foiled when the Emperor comes to visit. After a few drinks, he can't seem to control himself and despite her protest, decides he just has to take her to bed. She starts bleeding and the doctor is called in. There is no way the pregnancy can be saved. The Emperor is blaming himself for his lack of self-control, thinking he caused the death of his child. He says he couldn't seem to control himself and must simply have had too much to drink. The truth is that water was sprayed on the flowers Jin Huan sent and activated the drug. The Emperor has been under the effect of this drug as incense for years and is quite easily affected by it. Jin Huan very subtly gets Jing Shi to dispose of the evidence and just like that, it's done. Ling Rong and the Emperor both fall into depression. The Empress is pretty sure Jin Huan had a hand in this, but knows that starting an investigation would most likely only reveal the whole pregnancy plot and get herself in trouble, so she decides it's best to leave it at that. But it doesn't end there. Duan Huang Guifei asks to meet with her. She says she had some suspicions about Ling Rong's miscarriage and after some investigation found the remnants of an aphrodisiac in Ling Rong's ashes from that night. The Empress wants to brush it under the table, but there is a lot of evidence and Duan, Jing, and Jin Huan are all there. This is why it was so smart to get these two promoted. The Empress can and will ignore Jin Huan, but she can't ignore the combined power of all three of the next highest positions in the harem. She orders Ling Rong's palace searched. As expected, they find more of the aphrodisiac drug. They present the evidence to the Emperor, but since he still feels bad about her miscarriage, he wants to go easy on her. Jin Huan says she agrees. After all, Ling Rong has always been such a dear friend to her. She brings out a cream and says she remembers when Ling Rong gave it to her after she got scratched by a cat in episode 25. Duan and Jun Huan put on a nice little show. <coughs> Didn't Ling Rong give you this cream when you were pregnant? Why yes she did. Why do you ask? You miscarried right after that, right? Weird. Maybe we should have the doctor check it. Then the doctor checks it and says it's full of musk, which is dangerous for pregnant women. And see. So Jin Huan has known for years about this and based on how scared the Empress looked when she first brought up the cream, she knew as well. In episode 44, after checking the cream, Dr. Wen told Jin Huan that it had musk in it. It was a huge blow at the time, but now Jin Huan has just been waiting for the perfect opportunity to pull this out and give Ling Rong one final blow. Ling Rong is so Ling Rong is called in to see the Emperor. I love everything about the acting here. She knows this is the end, and after having been a pawn for so long, it must almost feel like a relief. When she sees the Emperor, she doesn't deny a thing. She tells the Emperor exactly how she's felt all these years. She's finally, finally able to let it all out. When asked, she says no one was behind her actions and she did it all on her own. Rather than demote her, the Emperor decides to put her under permanent house arrest. Someone will come by and slap her daily and all of her close servants will be killed. The servants are always getting punished for no reason. Ling Rong asks to see Jin Huan for her exit interview. She asks Jin Huan to bring her some almonds. Based on her face, the servant sent to slap her has been doing her job. She starts with her tragic backstory. Her parents were poor, but her mom worked day and night as a seamstress, killing her eyes so she could help her husband succeed. As she grew more haggard, her husband, Ling Rong's father, married more consorts who took advantage of her kind nature and bullied her. 
我很怕，梦见我变成跟我娘一样，生不如死。Jin Hong says it's no excuse for what she's done. Ling Rong does make some really good points about how Jin Hong has treated her, and I mentioned this in an earlier video. I wouldn't say she mistreated her, but she never really treated Ling Rong as a friend. More like a charity case she could use when it was convenient. She could have helped her at any time, but only deigned to do so when she needed her support after Mei Zhuang got imprisoned. Over the years, Ling Rong was used by her, by the Empress, and by the Emperor. But in the end, the only person she could truly hate was Jin Huan, who was so close and yet so far from her. Jin Huan decides she's heard enough, but before she can leave, Ling Rong gives her some parting words. And then she dies. Turns out that the almonds that she asked Jin Huan for were her suicide tool. Bitter almonds of this type contain cyanide, and even eating a few, like Ling Rong did, can cause death. So, why the hell do they have them? Story-wise, they tie into something that comes up in a later episode. But logically, why is the Imperial Kitchen like lettuce? Check fish. Check suicide almonds. Check check. Seems like a sketchy thing to keep in stock. So ends Ling Rong. I avoided discussing the relationship between Ling Rong and Jun Huan in most of these videos because it literally changed every other episode. They have had a tumultuous relationship, and neither of them is completely in the right. From Ling Rong's point of view, I can understand why she hates Jin Huan. There are quite a few scenes we see from Jin Huan's point of view, and then see Ling Rong misunderstand later. For example, in episode 17, when Ling Rong finally gets her first gifts from the Emperor, she gives Jin Huan one of the nicer dresses, and it means a lot because she's so poor. But to Jin Huan, they aren't that impressive. Jin Huan gives a dress to Huan Bi because she's her half sister and she wants to treat her well. But from Ling Rong's point of view, Jin Huan took the gift she gave her and gave it to her servant, pretty much saying the dress that meant so much for Ling Rong to finally get isn't even worthy of being worn by her. Another example is in episode 24. Jin Huan is meeting with the emperor about her father. Ling Rong comes to see the emperor and is quite sick at the time. Because the conversation is so serious, they end up forgetting about Ling Rong. And when Su Pei Sheng comes to tell them that Ling Rong has been waiting for a really long time, Jin Huan actually stands up for her and asks the emperor to see her. But the emperor wants to continue discussing her father. Su Pei Sheng comes out and says, "This time, Wan Guiren is in the front. The Emperor really doesn't want to see you." Making it seem like Jin Huan is keeping the emperor all to herself and mocking Ling Rong despite knowing that she's sick. And there are just a dozen other misunderstandings just like those. This is Legend of Jin Huan, so anyone that opposes her is automatically an antagonist. But I can see Ling Rong being the hero of her own story. What I mean is, if you made a story from Hua Fei's point of view, she's still the bad guy. But I could see Jin Huan as the villain in Legend of Ling Rong. Till next time, thanks for watching.